Thanks for coming, everyone. Good morning. Um, very excited to be at KubeCon once again. And uh, today we're going to talk about the top five success factors for cloud native enablement and common pitfalls to avoid. It's an interactive talk. We'll have a lot of uh, user interaction. And um, we'll have a slider on the screen. So if you have any, if you have any questions, um, you can just scan this QR code and type in your questions. But obviously, you can come on up here as well and ask your questions. But we know people don't always you know, like to yeah, talk, so that's options. fine. <laughs> Being inclusive. So. Oh, yeah, my name is Chad Kroll. I'm a platform engineer at Sivo. I'm also a CNCF ambassador, KCD organizer, and uh, largely related to this talk, I'll be speaking on my experience as an instructor at A Cloud Guru. And also, I have uh, Cube Skills. I'm the founder of uh, community, small communities where we learn cloud native and Kubernetes. Uh, also, I just have a general interest in andragogy, which is the study of adult learning. And I'm also a lifelong learner myself, so I enjoy you know, challenging myself and you know, pushing the boundaries. So. Cool. And from your experience, uh, you mentioned you've done a lot of uh, education stuff. So we're actually talking about training employees and community members, because you know the landscape is ever evolving. Um, what is sort of like the trend that you have seen, um, like some of the common pitfalls that people you know, get into when they're trying to get onboarded to a new technology or a new, uh, new tool? I would say the, the first thing is overwhelm, right? Yeah. <laughs> Once we look at the CNCF landscape and we try to decide which area, area we want to focus on, uh, it becomes very overwhelming. So. Yeah. Cool, and I'm Kunal Kushwaha. I work at SIBO uh, as the field CTO. I am a CNCF ambassador, GitHub star. I also have a community called We Make Devs. Uh, it's an educational community. I uh, do a lot of community stuff, open source stuff. Um, yeah. What do you, Kunal, I have a question. What do you usually point people towards as a first step to get involved in uh, anything open source? Anything open source, I would say just get, just get involved. But I know that sounds like a very bad answer, <laughs> but that's actually true. So no matter which tech stack you're involved in, I know there was the previous talk. Um, so with us, we have seen at SIBO um, a lot of projects that we use. Our employees dedicate some time and contribute towards that here and there. And uh, the best way to just get involved is, I mean, get involved. If, you if you're looking for action items, um, Check out the repository, clone it on your local system, um, get involved. But we'll talk about this. We'll talk about all of this, like how do you actively get involved in communities and um, yeah, just the whole learning process. Just but, start. Starting yeah. is the hardest part sometimes. Starting right? is the hardest part, <laughs> but just, just getting started. But don't worry, we won't be this vague uh, throughout, the, throughout the conversation. We have a nice set of action items and um, yeah, very excited. Um, cool. So, the first question we want to open up with is, why is it hard to train employees? I think from, from my standpoint and speaking from experience, I'll say it's, it's hard to dedicate the time and resources to training employees. And it usually falls on the, your, your fellow coworkers that are trying to do their jobs and, and, and uh, making the, the best effort they can to train employees, to skill them up on the uh, things that you're working on and, and things that you want to work on in the future. Uh, so it's, it's very time consuming, I would say. Yeah, time consuming. And um, anyone uh, can show sure raise the fans who struggle with maybe, who, who can relate to this, like being hard to train employees. Yeah, either training people or being trained yourself. <laughs> okay, once, once again. Yeah, and then now can you show sure raise the fans if you're a small startup? Big company? OK, you see there's a little trend. A lot of enterprise yeah. here, yeah. Good. OK, <laughs> cool. Um, we're going to throw some nice quotes here and there. So tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. So that's when we're going to talk about the learning approach together, like as a, as a community for employees and your organization. And yeah, everyone. I would say like, there's a lot of focus on AI assistant this, AI assistant that. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, there's, there's not a lot of talk about people coming together. Yeah. and supporting each other. So that's what we'll get into. Cool, cool. Uh, but why are we talking about this? What are the real challenges? Um, 
There was a recent study, the State of Tech Talent Report by the Linux Foundation. Uh, you can Google this. It's uh, free to uh, download. Um, it's like a big document which did like a lot of research around um, the State of Tech Talent Report. So it showed that 39% of organizations prioritize training to fill the skill gaps. They oftentimes uh, prioritize performance-based training. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. And certifications matter. This is a little bit of a, a like hot take. I don't have any certifications. This guy has like every certification. <laughs> so we'll talk about that as well um, in, in this talk. And um, yeah. Yeah, so some of the challenges that we see in the industry and you know, drawing from this report as well, it's just keeping people engaged. Yep. You know, if you've ever been a manager or you've uh, been managed, <laughs> I guess, you know, it's hard to stay on track with like a daily practice or a weekly practice, making sure that you're consistently learning and engaged. Um, a lot of people fall off, a lot of people get busy, we understand, but you know, that's, that's a common problem. Also, uh, applying the learnings that you're, you know, applying what you're learning to the job that you're doing, right? So it's not only just learning all the things, it's learning what's applicable to your job role and your job function. And then training methods, um, we've seen a shift from, you know, the instructor-led to, you know, online courses, employer-funded uh, training, et cetera. And I was wondering, just a show of hands, who is kind of has a preference of the online training, uh, self-paced courses, by show of hands. Cool, so that's a, that's a majority, I would say. Cool, cool. So let's talk about that. Um, keeping it very simple, top five action items for everyone. We're gonna talk about top five success factors for cloud native enablement. Before we get started, I have a question for Chad and if anyone else would like to answer. Like when you got started in tech, what was the approach that you were using to learn any new tech stack? For me, it has been always like blogs and docs. Like I can't learn from videos, which is ironic because I have a YouTube channel. I teach a lot of people like, um, you know. Yeah, for, uh, for me, it's interesting because for me, it's the people and yeah. there's been uh, I mean four the resources. Resources, yeah. okay, so, so like tech, resources. So like text-based or videos or what kind of do you, do you resonate with? I think it's a little bit of everything, but okay. I learn uh, by doing hands-on exercises. So uh -huh. if it's a video, um, you know, walking you through an exercise or doing something like that, I, I prefer that versus reading the, yep. the documentation. Cool, cool. Um, show of hands of folks who, um, who prefer live courses over recorded ones. Good, good. Cool, so let's talk about it. Uh, the <laughs> top five success factors. Uh, the first one being, Support and mentorship, need for mentorship. You know, you get um, a diverse perspective. And um, uh, when, it talk, when we talk about finding a mentor, it, it, it depends. Oftentimes I see people make this mistake that, okay, you're starting out in tech, you just reach out to some random person, and you're like, please mentor me. They might not, they might not know your scenario, they might not have the time. The, the term that I like to use is community-driven mentorship. So you wanna get involved in cloud native, join a CNCF group, join a project, join a meetup group or something like that. And there you get mentorship from like a collective group as a whole. The other thing is asking questions. So rather than asking question to one person, you can just ask it in a community. People call it learning in public or whatnot. So the, the whole idea is you get a broader support and uh, a broader um, you know, perspective on life in general. Second one being community participation. So like uh, CNCF, Kubernetes projects, uh, DevOps days, um, KCDs, KubeCons, and whatnot. This is important because, um, okay, Chad mentioned about AI, and this is like my take on AI. When we talk about AI replacing engineers, well, that's not happening, first of all. But what change is gonna happen is, let's say 20 years ago, you could get away with coding alone in your basement or whatnot, right? Now when, you're, when you have all these AI tools, I think the barrier to entry is being reduced. So when someone talks about AI is replacing engineers, software engineers, I don't think so. Talk about 20 years, 30 years ago, people coding in like, I don't know, C, assembly. I'm 25, so I don't know, I was five years old. But, <laughs> and then, then came modern programming languages, got automatic garbage collection and whatnot. So people were not like, okay, now I don't have to do these things manually. 
And now the next iteration is AI. So you're natural, in your natural language, you're talking to people. So I think the skills that are going to be even more relevant in the future, when people ask me how is AI going to change hiring roles, other skills are going to be more sh like shining a lot more, like empathy, um, communication, how, work, how well you work in a team. This is how you practice for that. I'll say that one thing that AI helps with, and uh, Michael touched on this in his talk earlier, it's providing the information. Yep. And also, um, what I've noticed that I've gotten good at is asking the right questions mm. and being able to feed the model a certain uh, you know, keywords or whatever to get back. And that, that applies to when you're talking to somebody else, too. Like, I was, I was wondering, Kunal, you get a lot of requests for you know, mentorship, and, and people probably ask you a lot, can you be my mentor? We all, we all know, by the way, that just going up to somebody and being like, can you be my mentor is probably a bad, <laughs> bad idea, right? Yeah. But how can, uh, what are some of the things that people have asked you or, or anything that stands out regarding you know, getting a mentor for folks? So the biggest mistake I see people make is they don't put in enough work and they expect other people to put in work for them. I'll give you an example. Mm. Uh, someone was like, um, Kunal, can you suggest me some Java open source projects to like contribute to? And I'm like, okay, what did you find? Did you, did you research? Did you like anything? And he was like, no, I just, I, I don't know. It's easy, right? You just Java open source projects, just go to GitHub trending tab or any other things like that. And then this other guy was like, I want to contribute to this repository, but I don't, I don't, I'm having a hard time. Okay, how can I help? And I saw the repository, I was like a React code base. I'm like, do you know React? He's like, no, I don't know React. Well, then you have to learn React first. So I think mentorship is a two-way street, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, you have to put in efforts, like make it easy for your mentor to mentor you, if that makes sense. It makes, um, <clears throat> a good example is when you're asking question in a community forum, people are like, hey, help me, I'm stuck. That's not nice. You should write, I tried this, this is the issue I'm facing, these are the resources I tried, this is the error I got, here are the logs, and um, please help me. Now this is what I'm getting. So you're right, um, communication plays a very big role, especially when you're actively involved in communities like this. That's a good tip. Cool. The next one being uh, knowledge sharing. Um, you don't have to be like an influencer. You know, some people are like, learn in public, get followers, you know, 100 days of code or whatnot. I think it's less about the metrics, it's more about credibility. I know some of the smartest people, like 100, 200 followers, but they share some really good stuff on social media, X or LinkedIn or whatever. Um, this is essentially just about getting feedback from the community. You launch a new product, you're learning something. Um, yeah, knowledge sharing is always nice to find your... Also could be teaching other people, right? Yeah. So a lot of people learn better when they teach it to another person. So paying it forward and yeah. that helps both. Brings us it helps to like the yeah, next both point, sense. which is the village, uh, village effect. So research in social support theory suggests that a diverse support network improves uh, your performance, your confidence, and um, I mean, certainly in my experience, it has been like amazing whenever I talk to a group of people, like my own personal growth has been like really nice. Yeah, anybody in study groups here? Study groups work well for whether you're going for a certification or trying to learn a new topic. Just being in a small group that is all focused on the same thing really helps. Yeah, so let's just quickly summarize this, Chad. Some action items for um, <clears throat> support and mentorship. Let's say you're at an organization. So what are some other things you recommend? Yeah, so I, I think it's finding your village, right? So it's finding the people who are interested in the same topics. Um, like I said, you know, teaching back and being able to, um, you know, articulate what you're trying to learn, the, the whys and the whats, and then, you know, trying to, um, you know, support others in their journey as well. And I think there's, there is something to say about, you know, the, you know, the, the, the small group and the people that you're able to uh, influence when you, when you kind of um, bring them in and, and, you know, provide the support that they need. Cool, cool. All right, on to the next one. Two out of five. That's uh, over to Chad. Yeah, so interactive, interactivity of learning resources. So this is where we get into hands-on labs. So hands-on labs are obviously important for, you know, this tacit knowledge that we start to develop. Tacit knowledge is the ability, you know, the inability, I should say, to describe something on paper or verbally. And so um, hands-on labs are perfect for that because you're in the terminal, you're doing the, the work, and therefore you, you learn more, uh, learn through experience. 
And secondly, cloud sandboxes. So being experimental, uh, exploring the territory, learning the environments that you're going to be working in, and just being able to, to, to treat this as a sandbox and you know, spin something up, have it fail, then restart, and then spin up another cloud sandbox. It's really helpful for uh, trying, to, trying to learn new things. And then safe experimentation. So you can uh, you know, experiment with something like in Killer Coda or play with, uh, play with Kubernetes or Docker Playground. And it really helps your learning and that you're um, not afraid to experiment with lots of different things. Yeah, couldn't agree more. So this is like the gym buddy effect, where you have a, a partner. And studies show that you know, when you uh, group up with people and, and you have an accountability buddy, um, if anybody's had one of those, it improves your performance and consistency because you have this person that's counting on you to learn uh, together. And, and so you hold each other accountable and you help each other. Yeah, it's true for organizations as well. Uh, anyone who works by themselves in their company, like no, no one else, like you're just coding alone. Yeah. So that's Nobody, what I meant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, yeah, having a having your your village and, and having a, a gym buddy really helps. So this is one of our one of our quotes: uh, the delicate balance of mentoring someone is not creating them in your own image, but giving them the opportunity to create themselves. This is really important because, not you know, it's not so much trying to get somebody at your level. Everyone comes from different backgrounds. And as Nancy was alluding to in the last presentation, um, you know, people are uh, from different backgrounds, different areas of the world. And so we, we have to take that into consideration and meet them where they are. Cool. Over to the next one, job market relevance. This is my favorite topic. Because you know things are ever evolving. Now, people are talking about platform engineering and LLMs and RAG and, I don't know, so many things. So industry trends, how to stay up to date. Um, bringing back the point that we were raising earlier, getting involved in communities, going to events like this, groups like this, it's a highly um, well, relevant way to do so. Um, but that's essentially what, what I do. I sign up to like some newsletters, the Kubernetes newsletters, cloud native newsletters, some AI newsletters. Um, I go to a lot of events and meetups. I follow relevant people on social media, and that has been like more than enough. Like I have more info than I need. I in think, order to I think people today. underestimate how kind of beneficial these in-person events are, mm -hmm. even after COVID and everything's online and available via video. But you know. What are, what are some of the benefits that you've seen at, at all the KubeCons that you've been to? Uh, what would you say stands out the most? Yeah, networking with people. And I really like the, uh, the project updates they make in the keynotes. Um, but uh, the project pavilion as well. You can directly just go to the project maintainers and ask them, you know, what's up? And uh, who, who is using the project? Like, I had some good conversations with the Cilium people, EBPF people. Um, but yeah, it's always uh, it's always nice. Like, it, there's no one right answer. You have to be just you know just be involved. But I know we're sh you know a bit short on time, so we'll uh, uh, we'll go through this. And I really want to raise one point. What does it say? Latest tools. Latest tools. So um, I want to talk a little bit more about how do you know whether the trend is actually something to get? Like this is my personal experience. So you get something that people are talking about. Um, like Web3 was really popular, now yeah. AI, so many fields, right? So how do you make sure you make the jump? Uh, I spoke to Kelsey, uh, he was at our conference at Navigate, um, and he gave a very nice explanation. He was like, always like stick to the basics. Whenever you see like a trend coming in, you're like, okay, this new trend is coming in, I don't know, serverless or Web3 or whatever, you take a look at the very like basic fundamental layer. Mm. And that will help you escape the life cycle. So escape the hype, hype, Trend. hype train, hype life cycle. And I think that was a really good point because yeah. these things keep evolving, new versions keep coming out. But if your fundamentals are strong, if today is Kubernetes, tomorrow it'll be something else. You can, you know, adapt and um, monitoring tools keep changing or whatnot. Yeah, and then uh, align goals with interests. So yeah, whatever job roles you want, if I 
wanna, I wanna, I, I always wanted to work in cloud native since I was in freshman year. So I never got into crypto or Web3. Just didn't have the time. I would love to, but it's just so many information overload already. I was like, okay, maybe when I have free time, I'll explore a little bit. So I aligned my interests with my like goals. And there's this thing called, I'll close with pie shape learning. Know everything about something, something about everything. So pie is like this. So you know a little bit about just the industry, trends and stuff. And these two pillars are your deep dives. So for me, it would be, I don't know, ML and cloud. And web development is like here. Like I'm not a good web developer, but I can write, like I can create buttons and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, also, I think, T-shaped learning, right? T-shaped learning, pie-shaped learning, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. So um, another, another success factor is focusing on real-world projects and industry challenges. So we want to focus on the, the why. So getting to know, you know, why is DevOps a thing? <laughs> you know, why are we learning the things that we're learning? How does this apply to what we're doing? Uh, and uh, that's, that's really important, because we need to know why we're doing it before we can do it and solve the problems that we're trying to solve. Also, real-world scenarios, so taking what you're learning and having this be up-to-date uh, scenarios, up-to-date learnings and, and exercises that you're going through to apply this to what you're doing in your job today. And then auditing, so if, if you've ever gone through a security audit, uh, you know, having the full landscape of, you know, being not only that security is a, a big topic nowadays and, and uh, rightfully so, you know, being able to go through those same steps to investigate, you know, what are the security elements of my environment and just kind of comparing that to what you're learning is super helpful as well. You have a question, uh, Chad. This is known as, are you, are you familiar with the term tutorial hell? Tutorial hell, yeah. <laughs> Anyone familiar with that? So it's like you're, you're just, you, would you like to tell more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tutorial hell is where you go through all these videos, right? Of uh, these tutorials, and you're seeing how all these things are done, uh, being done, and it's like, you know, how do you how do you get out of that and actually do it yourself and be able to get out of that trap and be able to apply that to your knowledge, your situation, and you know, get 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 more hands on, right? Yep. So this is like the survivorship bias, right? So we focus, we tend to focus on success stories. And you know, you hear about this even at KubeCon, all the talks are, this is what we did, and we did this fantastic thing, and this is this is the focus. We we're actually saying, you know, the success factor here is the opposite. Let's focus on our failures. We only learn when we fail. So let's fail more and also fail fast. We gotta encourage people to fail fast or else they won't have the proper learning that they need to grow. You can't do any growing if you're not failing. And then give autonomy. Uh, managers and people at, at the uh, higher levels have to have the trust in people to fail, right? You have to be given the opportunity to fail in order to fail, and that, that shouldn't be a bad thing. You should be able to fail. Mm -hmm. All right, the last one, certificate and validation. How much time do we have? Um, five minutes. Okay. Um, validation, like as human beings, we always like, I don't know about you, but like, we're always looking for like validation, a sense of achievement or something like that. Certifications yeah. help in that. If you're a uh, competitive yeah. like me, you like to compete <laughs> with people to get the, you know, the cubes or not. And, cubes or not. And... <laughs> oh, you're cubes or not? No, I'm, I am okay. still competing, but. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> nice. Uh, cubes or not is like, if you get all the nice CNCF certifications, you get to be a part of a cool group called cubes or not. So you yeah, get a nice collect jacket. them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, check it out. Um, but I'll quickly uh, share my thoughts on this. For me personally, certifications, there are two ways looking at it. The first one being your job requires it. I know some of the jobs require like some AWS certification exam or something mm -hmm. like that. Yep. Um, I, I have seen jobs that require that. So in that case, you need to get it. But if you're doing certifications for the sole purpose of like, um, I don't know, it's a hot take. I, I personally feel like it's, it's good that people are getting rewarded, but that shouldn't be your main like, motivation, if that makes sense. I mean, at least for me, the, motiva <clears throat> Sorry. the motivation has always been learning. If I'm spending my time learning a course or something, if I'm getting some real value out of it, and if I'm, like Chad mentioned, able to apply my skills in the real world. So I did that via like, YouTube and docs and whatnot. And I never really got my certifications because, like, Sivo never asked me to, you know? But if I go to a role where they ask, I feel like I would. But given that, 
I am going to apply for like the CKA, CKAD uh, to be a part of the Kubestar Art Gang. What I'm trying to say is that these things are nice, but it depends if your organization is really asking for it, the kind of role you are looking for. If I had to give one short answer, yeah, why not? Go for it. That's, that would be my answer. Like you have nothing to lose and it's, it's actually a good... Oh, one last thing. Certifications that mimic like a real world scenarios, those are the ones that have like value. Like Udemy courses are great, but if you attach a Udemy course certificate on your resume, because you know Udemy certificates are just like, watch all the videos, you get the certificate. Mm. Getting certificates are nice, which are like proctored and in an intern, you know, like highly relevant, like CK, CKD. Yeah, but verified thoughts. achievements yeah. are better. Quickly, your thoughts on this? Oh, I forgot to just. Yeah, yeah so I, I have a book called Acing the Certified Kubernetes Administrator yeah. Exam, so maybe I'm a little bit biased towards uh, <laughs> certifications. Um, I, I have one more certification to get on my Kubester knot, which is the CKS, which is, um, yeah, I, I uh, so I, what I will say about certifications is that I think uh, like the certifications like the Linux Foundation and, and CNCF provide um, and the validation part is the most important part and that's where you see like for the CKA for example, having that on your resume is, is mm -hmm. extremely useful and in the, the exam format and that it's entirely in the terminal and you're actually p performing the commands, there's um, that, that kind of elevates the validity even more. Yeah. So. I would say just go for it, and uh, this is like one last example before we do the poll, which is um, like if you, if you see someone, you meet someone and they have CK, CKAD, Certified System Administrator, Security, and all the like nice certificates, and you don't know them personally, I mean, automatically in your mind you would be like, okay, this person knows something. They're not a complete newbie. They know I can talk to them about something related to kids or whatever. That's the social proof. You know, um, but yeah, that was it. Those were the five uh, steps. Thank you. But oh, let's do a more. yeah. We have let's one do more, a live uh, exercise. What part, we're doing now is um, going to participate. <laughs> yeah. If you can scan this, uh, do you have anything to add before we do that? Yeah, so I guess just to, to wrap up, I think uh, what, I've, what we've seen uh, according to the, the report and our findings and our experiences, I think what we've seen is, you know, when we, when we come together as a group, when, it, when, it's, when there are people involved and mm -hmm. you're all motivating each other to succeed in whatever area, whatever learning you're trying to achieve, um, I think that's, that's what stood out to me. And... Um, yeah. I think this is a good takeaway for this. Cool, cool. Right. Appreciate it. So what we're going to do is we discussed like five key points. Now we are going to ask you questions. How you're going to approach this at your organizations and just jot stuff down. This is anonymous. You don't have to sign in on anything. So you will see a way to do it now. Let's play this. So the first question is what's one approach that would enhance mentorship and make learning resources more engaging. What about you, Chad? Yeah, so making learning more engaging. I think it's fine. Yeah, just one thing. Um, sorry to cut you off. We ha I have a $50 gift card, so you, I'll give one random person for the CNCS store. Yep. And we got to wrap it up, so yeah. I guess we we'll... got to wrap it up. Like, just can we get two minutes or? Okay. Let's just yeah. go really quick through these. Yeah, yeah there's only three. So. Open source. Yeah, we're we're going to see your schedule. answers on the screen in the word bubble really there. Fast. So the more participation, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do 30, 30 seconds per question. So open source, in person schedule, community. So community is highlighted quite well. Oh, wow, that's good. Yeah, community. Virtual good. meetups, or directly improvements, affects meetups, learning, testing. Okay, cool. Next one. Uh, what's the most effective way to ensure that your learning aligns with the current job market needs? So whatever you're learning, in what way would you encourage people to apply it? Uh, could be open source, could be hackathons, could be build your own projects. Yeah, in the industry, what, what's, uh, what's going to apply the, the, the most effective way? Um, I would say, yeah, just yeah, get, getting in tune with um, What's, what's going on in the industry and, and paying attention to uh, the trends and uh, what is the, um, 
the newsletter that's most popular. TLDR? What is it? Too long, didn't read? Oh, TLDR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the TLDRs, yeah. OK, that's nice. That's actually the last one, because the next one is actually similar around real world experiences, so we'll skip that. But, hackathons is a big one. Uh, open source is good, hackathons is good. Or speak at conferences, you know? Yeah. You, sp you can speak at events and stuff. And uh, yeah, this watch, was good. Watch Kunal's videos. Watch Chad's uh, <laughs> book. Um, cool. We've gone over, so I guess it's. Yeah, I think we can uh, wrap it up. Um, thank you for joining, folks. And if you want to catch us later, we'll be here. Thank you, the events team and the AV team. Appreciate it.